Hey there, this is Clay with RelationshipInnerGame.com and in this video we're going to be talking about five ways that you can make a guy want a relationship with you even if he swears he doesn't want one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it, all right? The very first way that you can go about doing this is to make sure that the focus of your interactions, the focus of your dating, time together, and all that stuff is not solely on sex. Now, don't get me wrong, sex is a wonderful, amazing, great thing, but if you're only focusing on sex and you know physical attraction and all of that stuff, then you shouldn't be surprised that maybe some other areas in the relationship are lacking, like uh, you know emotional connection or things like that, right? So uh, make sure that you bring up all of these other areas as well in your uh, encounters and experience with this man, okay? Be sure to cultivate an emotional connection and not just a physical sexual connection. That's number one. Number two is to actually make sure that you like your life the way that it is right now with or without a guy in it. If you actually like and enjoy your life and love your life the way that it is, then what's going to happen is you're going to come across much more uh, differently than if you just didn't like your life, if you just hated your life and you were just hoping that uh, you know some guy would come along and uh, you know suddenly be the center of your world or something like that. That's kind of not very healthy, uh, but if you just genuinely don't like your life, then making some changes to actually enjoy and actually like your life will go a long way in uh, changing the way that you express yourself emotionally and bring yourself into interactions with other people because it's going to light you up if you really like your own life. You're going to be much happier, much more enthusiastic, much more enjoyable to be around if you really like what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis in your own own life. Uh, so that is number two. And this kind of goes into number three here, which is the more he spends time with you and the more he commits to you, you should also be taking him deeper into your world and uh, rewarding him by showing him more and more cool things that he gets as he commits deeper, right? So if the two of you are just, you know, hanging out, Netflix, maybe a little bit of sex on the side or something like that, then, you know, maybe you just kind of keep it at like dinner or coffee or something like that, right? But uh, if the two of you are actually starting to do more like real dating kind of things, then uh, maybe you should start to invite him to do more exciting things with you. Maybe go hang out with uh, friends together, go to events together, go uh, see things in like, you know, wonderful museums or whatever. And then, uh, you know, as the two of you start to deepen and strengthen your connection even more, you can invite him more and more and more into your world. And this ties into that last point because you want to have a world to invite him into, right? You don't just want to uh, be some sort of person who, who's sort of like devoid of passions and interests and hobbies and things like that. So make sure that you really cultivate uh, your own life as well, going back to point number two. But that is point number three. Point number four is to make sure that you are open and honest and vulnerable with a guy. Okay, now vulnerable, most people think of that as like, you know, weak, ah. but, but no, vulnerability is actually a wonderful, juicy, amazing thing for relationships. Uh, having the ability and the capacity to be emotionally vulnerable with your experiences, to share what you're going through, to really just kind of be open and honest with somebody rather than just kind of falling into the, you know, polite trap of, Oh, that's so nice. That's really cool. That's awesome. I'm really excited. That's so cool. Oh, I'm not doing anything particularly fun. I thought I'd just relax and take it easy. I'm just kind of going with the flow. That's really cool. You know, like that's that's not fun because people can't like attach themselves to that personality. They don't know who it is you actually are or what it is you actually stand for or what's important to you. And it's really hard to form an emotional connection with somebody who, who isn't really being open and honest and vulnerable um, through how they speak, through, you know, their body language and all of that stuff, right? Um, and if you can't kind of give somebody something to 
hang their emotional feelers onto, then it shouldn't come as no surprise to you that uh, you would have a hard time getting somebody to want to be in a relationship with you. But the more open and real you can be with, uh, with, with that person or with anybody in general, the much more likely they are going to want to be in a relationship with you. That's point number four. And five, our final point here, is that you do not want to over invest with any particular guy, right? If you over invest with somebody, then uh, they, they will probably not want to commit to you. But if you keep the investment level at approximately the same uh, as, as how they're investing, then that is much more likely to you know, match in with basic social norms and make them much more likely to want to invest with you. Now, let me kind of explain to you what I mean by this whole investment thing. So we're not talking about uh, you know, stock markets and mutual funds or anything like that. Uh, what we're talking about here is really more the idea of emotional investment, right? So there are a certain organic way that most relationships uh, sort of develop, right? You know, somebody takes a little bit of a risk, maybe ask somebody out on a date, the other person maybe says yes. And then maybe the other person says, oh, okay, that'd be fun. Like, do you want to go for a walk afterwards in the park? And the other person says, sure. Then the next thing you know, you're holding hands. And then maybe the next date, uh, you're like going in for a little kiss on the cheek or something. And then date after that, it's like, you know, like real kiss as you drop them off at the at the house or something and just sort of like gradually goes up right but unfortunately what a lot of people do is they over invest you know maybe they send out a text message and the guy sends out a text message and then they send out another text message and the guy doesn't respond and so they send another text message the guy still doesn't respond another 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 and before you know it you're way over invested and the other guys uh, investment level is way down here and it's just really lopsided and when that happens it sort of messes up the social dynamic and it kind of repels the guy right so that's what I mean by uh, not being over invested so if you follow these five strategies that I've outlined here I think it's gonna really help you uh, get guys to want to be in a committed relationship with you, especially high quality guys, okay? Um, so if you'd like to learn more about how to get commitment from the man of your dreams, please go ahead and check out our website, relationshipinnergame.com, and sign up for our email newsletter so that we can start sending you advice, tips, and strategies to help you get that commitment. Um, if you like what we're doing here, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up or uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel um, or, you know, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Guys, what do you think? What, what, what is it that makes you want to commit to a woman? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Until next time, this has been Clay with Relationship Inner Game.